The woodpecker in the tree in the darkness of light. One. The woodpecker in the tree on the hill above the guardrail on Route 100 southbound by Minnetonka Boulevard is dead. It died to the shock of sound of a Toyota crashing icily into the guardrail. In the whir of the world, driving by the woodpecker grows cold amongst the blank figures of winter, the tracks of stray deer, the ballast of the living, discarded from passing glances of cars at the wreck of one of their own, the friable inevitability of their lives, the mute acceptance of tragedy as mere interest end. There is the sleep, the dark, enviable sleep of eternities, the apperception denied of the onlyness of now, the ever-sleeping reality in which billions of zombies trod this planet, blind in the acuity of their sight, ecstatic in unacknowledged restraint, unknown of the burn of true color into their corneas, unfelt of any true emotion sunk acid deep in their esophagi, for the death they see is not of the woodpecker, nor the tree, nor the car, but of their knowing they were never seen, never perceived, never crashed into, never anything but alive. Two. And there was the twig unbroken, in violet, at the top of the tree, where the woodpecker died to the shock of sound of a Toyota pummeled into the tree where it lived, then died. Then this twig was broken from its branch, broken but full, full but alive, alive and glorious and full, but still it swayed gently in the gray breeze above Minnetonka Boulevard as it thwacked against the seeping trunk of the tree on the hill where the woodpecker died, it tapped the taps a bridge to a living, wide-awake world, not unlike anything previously ever heard for, it was one of the many moments, one of the last survivors, one of the remnants of life chiseled by the dropping of new snowflakes, healed by the nibble of thorns upon the fresh exposed grass in the skid marks, in the ameliorating warmth of this December evening, where I drive my car past this very evening, past this sight, so dismal, past the ghost silhouettes of a high-beam headlight, on the background life in a night deep in a Minnesota place, rustling in the nervous freeze of a fawn glancing at me in my light, reflections of my mirror passing by. Three, in a sleep, in my sleep, in the sleep of the drowsy world, stood the world in my dream, flouncing through fatality, unscared of the bridge to other ways, unknown of a fear in this fearless realm, silenter than the deadest woodpecker, I spread my gospel, my gospel of fear, into this courageous world, into this world where contagion is unknown, a mythos, unplanted, and the tree in my dream on the hill above the guardrail on Route 100 southbound by Minnetonka Boulevard is that contagion as it foliates within and through my dream, pressing inexorably outward. In another dream, a bloated, growing crimson star swallows a planet, emblazoned into the backwater recesses of the mind of an astronomer long dead, who, forgotten now by most and at least as uncared for and unmissed, experienced death in such a magnitude only to put ink to dry paper as I do these thoughts which orbit about me, which orbit my dreams unfettered by fear as the tree explodes forth a vernal agony in the sleeping reality. It is the slow accumulation of dreams which balances our lives. It is the slow scream of giant stars a million years dead reflected in a fawn's glowing red eye that makes me sleep so deeply tonight. 4. In the morning, the woodpecker in the tree on the hill above the guardrail on Route 100 southbound by Minnetonka Boulevard is still dead, dead, from the shock of sound of a Toyota long gone, its skid marks swallowed now by the new fallen snow of a Minnesota time invisibly accumulated in the deep dream of this planet asleep in the night of a trillion other nights on the sharp edge of oblivion. The mind is the thing which defines itself. The mind is the dark edge of the ghostly fawn's glowing eyes, tired of the passing of cars, tired of the passing of passings, tired of than the woodpecker is dead. Yet in its serene tiredness, it rumbles a taut, angry darkness. It is a spitefulness it knows nothing about. It is a mantra of primordial hatred for a recognition of things it cannot recognize. And it is then that the tree bursts forth from my dream, burst forth from the reality sleeping in my dream or waking state, and my passing car is swallowed in its cancer bursting forth from all the edges of this darkness, infinitely old, and glistens ferociously pure, crystalline in grace, yet unnoticed by the isolation of the dark milling traffic in the glowing fawn's eyes.